So it's that time of year again, in anticipation of back to school, back to work, and back to church, the makers of planners, daytimers, and agendas are going all out. Store displays, Facebook ads, and email newsletters are in full force, reminding us that the spaciousness of summer is winding down and the season of full schedules will soon be upon us. Just this past week, I was invited to buy the Passion Planner, the Nourished Planner, the Liturgical Planner, and I found a Facebook page called Planner Addiction. This hurry up and get back to it all rhythm is so ingrained in us that I notice that even for those of you who have retired, early September still gives rise to a different energy. It seems we all start to get busy being productive all over again. This morning's text from Ephesians has something to say for such a time. We are well into chapter 5, and the writer is still concerned with how the members of the community at Ephesus are living their lives and spending their time. He counsels them to live wisely and goes on to describe what that would entail. This passage suggests that living wisely involves three things, being attentive to God, a theme carried over from chapter 4, making the most of time, and worshiping God in thanksgiving and praise. Together, these three practices of attentiveness, making the most of time, and expressing thanksgiving help us to live wisely and to flourish, which is what God wants for us all. Jesus said, I came that you might have life abundant, and this abundance is a gift from God. Last week, the text in chapter 4 invited us to spend time with God and to let God in. This week's passage picks up on that invitation the writer directs listeners to understand the will of God and to be filled with the Spirit. The Common English Bible translation emphasizes the need to be filled with the Spirit simply by making it the title of this passage. And we have already seen in previous chapters in Ephesians that the writer believes that the Spirit is powerful and can do anything. And if we attend to our connection to God, we will be filled with that Spirit's power. So this practice of attentiveness helps us to discern God's will, to discern God's dream for us. As we listen to the still, small voice, we receive guidance for how to make the most of time at any given time. So as we move into this rentrée, this back to everything time of year, in response to God's call to live wisely, I hope we let the Spirit help us make the most of time. I pray that we all become more intentional about listening to how the Spirit would have us spend our time in any moment. The text reminds us that these are evil times, a reality that has been named throughout the ages. In the Hebrew Bible, the book of Ecclesiastes reminds us that there is a time for everything, including a time for war and a time for peace. And at funerals, we often speak about how the person being eulogized used their given time. 
author Charles Dickens began a tale of two cities by proclaiming it was the best of times, it was the worst of times. Throughout time, people have been present to both good and evil. And the common English Bible version of today's Ephesians text tells us to take advantage of every opportunity because these are evil times. Now, if any time can be described in part as evil, then we ought to live wisely and make the most of time all the time. So how do we do that? On her blog called Contemplative Viewfinder, Melissa Bain Sevier told this story about making the most of time. One evening, while she was planning to work at her computer to catch up and to cross things off her list, her spouse suggested that they go canoeing with friends instead. Faced with the choice between working and canoeing, she chose canoeing. And she was delighted to find that after an evening on the water, the next day, she felt more focused and happier, and she still got all her work done. She chose to say yes to a nudge from the spirit, disguised as her partner's canoeing invitation, and the result was more ease and more joy. Yet in our society, conditioned as we are from an early age, we focus mostly on working hard, producing results, and getting things done. We want to live healthy, happy, peaceful lives, but we often fall into the trap of believing that we have to do it all alone and that there's something wrong with us if we have to ask for help, even from God. We think that in the end, it's all on us. We work harder and try to manage our schedules better by using those planners and agendas. And we can get so caught up in proving ourselves that we forget to let God in, and to receive God's help. And all this doing and proving can leave us feeling a bit empty and worn out. Enter the Holy Spirit, who working in us does infinitely far more than we can ask or imagine. Filled with the Spirit, even drunk with the Spirit, we come to make the most of our time and are surprised to find that it is more than enough. Just like when Jesus multiplied the little boy's loaves and fish, with the Spirit's help, time can seem to expand so that all that needs to be done gets done with less stress than we had imagined possible. A sense of spaciousness fills our days and our being, and it feels good. There is a quote of Martin Luther's that is shared in contemplative circles and which captures the wisdom of this practice. I have so much to do that I shall spend the first three hours in prayer. It's counterintuitive, but it's true. The more we let God work in and through us, the less we have to stress and struggle. We don't have to do it all alone. God wants to help. God wants to help us flourish. God is inviting you to let the Spirit of God fill you up, help you to live wisely, and make the most of your time. If you do, 
you will more often be surprised by joy and moved to gratitude and praise. Your cup will be full, your heart will overflow, and you will want to give thanks at all times and for everything. Filled with the Spirit of God, you will be often moved to thanksgiving and praise and worship. We have a God-given need to worship, and there are countless ways to appreciate God's blessings and to express our gratitude and our wonder. The text, text says to worship through psalms, which we can pray or sing and which help us to express all the emotions. The text also commends singing and making music as a way to offer thanks and praise. Make a joyful noise to all the earth. Worship your God with gladness. And while we might be inspired to pray and sing our thanksgiving, we might also be called to go canoeing with friends, or to take a walk in the forest, or to spend time enjoying birdsong in the backyard. Many of us find time spent in nature is most worshipful, and that we are most present to goodness and beauty and grace while enjoying God's good creation. However it is that we feel most compelled to express it, here in church on Sunday morning, in song and melody making, or in nature, it is good to give God thanks and praise. So with grateful hearts, let us give thanks for everything and at all times. For the Spirit of God blows among us and we are not alone. We don't have to make it on our own. God loves us and wants to help us live wisely and to flourish. So may you live with care and may you live wisely. May you spend time with God to better understand the will of God. May you make the most of time. May you be filled with the Spirit and make a joyful noise to God. And finally, with grateful hearts, may you give thanks to God in all times and for everything. No matter what, no matter what.